we talked to the players about it when um, our first team meeting on Thursday night. We had a compliance meeting, but it, we looked at it and it was uh, the last time we were in there as a group was 504 days ago on March 12, 2020. So um, we learned that we did meetings outside. What they went through last year just to be able to play those seven games was, you know, extraordinary. And we've got to thank our administration and our doctors, especially for getting us through what we got through. So, but it's it's good to get back to some sense of normalcy. But we also cautioned them that with this Delta variant, we still need to be really vigilant about what's going on right now, just because you're not out of the woods, even if you are vaccinated. So, um, we're still trying to be really cautious. Um, and you just go back to what happened with the NC State baseball program, you know, making all the way to the semis, and then all of a sudden they get hit, and then they can't play the championship game. So we still got to be conscious of it. So. But it is good to be back out and doing uh, somewhat close to normalcy. So. Are you getting the entire team vaccinated? Is that a um, possibility? Or well, this, the UC system rule is if you're not vaccinated, you can't go to school. So if they're but not aren't vaccinated, there are exceptions or something? yeah, there's yeah. Some, there are some kids that have applied for waivers and um, they're in the process of that. But we'll be at. They just won't be able to play if either they, they have to get a waiver or they have to get vaccinated. So. But it's not a significant portion of your team because that could... No, we've, we've, okay. we're probably at 98% oh, okay. right now. There you so. go. Wait, they can't play if they apply for they a waiver? They go to school. Oh, okay. No, they can, if they apply for a waiver and the waiver's passed, then they're okay. Okay. But if the waiver gets denied, they have to get vaccinated. Okay. So. And um, is that just based on, like, maybe previous health conditions or anything? Yeah, there's some medical and religious. I think. Religious. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it's a UC system, though, so it's mm-hmm. not just... It wasn't like the... The UCLA doctors here, maybe you know, I think it's in collaboration with everybody. Talking to David Shaw, I think Stanford has the same exact rule, and there's a lot of places that are in that. So I think when we get to the Hawaii game, they'll either be vaccinated or the waiver was approved. So there have been a lot of just questions about the vaccine, obviously, and for kids like these, did you bring mm-hmm. in experts to kind of answer yeah, any of their questions? We, use, or? Our, our, we rely on our medical staff for anything. So the, again, it's their choice. Um, and if there's anybody that had any issues, we, we, we did one-off meetings with our medical. Um, Dr. Bowman was, you know, was, has been tremendous through this whole thing. Him and Dr. McAllister have been great with us. So um, we actually met in last year um, over Zoom once a week with our medical staff and all the players and their families because, you know, as this first came out, um, we all learned a lot of things. You know, we talked about, I remember in that meeting on March 12th, um, we were going to go for break. Uh, we were just going to flatten the curve, and then we're going to start spring ball back up. You know, that's about all we knew about COVID at the time, and, and uh, a lot has changed since then. So I don't know if I've heard flatten the curve in over 500 days either. So, yeah, I heard that. Um, so but we anything medical like that, we rely totally on. Uh, Scott, can you tell them to turn it yeah. um, Anything. Uh, it's good tune. <laughs> <laughs> you get melodies now. Anything medical, um, we just defer to them. And they, they have all the answers instead of them trying to tell me and me and uh, us interpret it as coaches. So um, we, are, we have our players have great access to those guys. So. A couple of personnel questions. Jay Toia, is, what's the status of his eligibility? You know what? I haven't even asked that question. So he's out here practicing full speed. And um, we haven't had a, I haven't, Aaron Atkins, our compliance director, is, um, she was out here yesterday. She'll be out here again today. But we're, we're going full speed ahead and, and he's practicing full speed ahead. So. Uh, in the first practice, I know this is kind of preliminary, but I saw uh, Bo Calvert kind of working at that Raider spot. Is he going to get a look there? Yeah. Again, we and we're it's the multiplicity of our defense. So, you know, Damian Sellers, Jeremiah Trojan. There's a lot of guys that have, that play both. You know, Carl is Carl's a safety that plays there. So, um, I think the one thing with you have to be conscious of who you're moving around and what they can handle mentally and. We could put Bo on offense and he would handle it better. He's just such a sharp football player. So um, I think just trying to look at depth and maybe different packages of, you know, can you play with multiple linebackers on the field? Um, and then they, if they understand, really just, just job swapping. So, um, you know, he'll, he'll continue to do both because he can handle doing both. Coach, playing inside any, and outside. Uh, uh, do you have any updates on, uh, on Paul Gratton? Is he practicing with the team this yeah, week? Yeah, Paul's or, practicing with him. Is he, are there any team discipline that's being considered for the, the reports that came out Everything's, this week? Everything um, that we handle with our players is done internally. We're good standing. We talked yes, about this last week. Yeah. Oh, you guys had Westbrook on campus yesterday? Yeah. Uh, did he talk to the team or was that just no, a surprise to No, he just stopped by. Or? I think he was coming over to practice. Um, I met Russ when we played at Oklahoma. He was on our sideline when he was still, I think he was still with the Thunder then. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a big Russell Westbrook fan. I don't know if there's a, 
tougher day in day out guy and he and he's just a great you know i know a bunch of our players are huge laker fans and they were fired up you know, i think all los angeles is fired up to get to get russ back home and russ is always around um, you know he played here his wife played here um, he lives local um, but just a just a great guy and we, we were excited for him i was just i was just happy with him. And I told him he'd be a, he's a hell of a football player. That's First time I ever watched him play, yeah. um, I was in San Francisco and they were playing Golden State in the playoffs when he was at Oklahoma. And, I was like, and then he said one of his first loves, he said he was a running back outside linebacker in high school. So. <laughs> Where would you play him? He would play anywhere he wants. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'd be smart enough to play him both ways too. So um, I think he'd be a matchup nightmare for people to cover, but his toughness and physicality, I think he'd be a hell of a defensive player. So. So if we can find a couple West Russell Westbrooks out there, we'll be okay. <laughs> what, what does that do generally when you have guys like Russell Westbrook coming by or Tom Brady coming mm-hmm. to practice for the program, just having those big names, big faces for your players to see? I think it's the one thing about, I would say, both Tom and Russell that stand out about them is they both immensely talented, but I don't know if you can find two guys that have better work ethics. And I, and I think the message to our players all the time, and we do have a bunch of NFL guys that use this facility in the off season, mm-hmm. um, but there's not one NFL guy who – who comes here and runs a 10-yard sprint and then picks his spots up and leaves. It's, you know, you're almost kind of mesmerized by their work ethic. And, um, you know, I've seen Tom throw to some of our receivers and you know, our guys, 45 minutes later, he's still going and they're, you know, and, and he's 43 years old and our kids are 19 going. We're, we're, we're still going, and but that's what makes those guys great. And I think when our players get a chance to see that, um, you know, what it takes to be the best at your sport, whether it's basketball or whether it's football, um, it's the, it's that unrelenting work ethic that, that, that those guys have and, and how dedicated they are to their craft. Talk a little bit about Devin Kirkwood, what you saw of him in spring and what you expect from him. Yeah, spring. Devin did a really nice job in the spring. You know, the one thing, you're never sure when a kid gets in here um, how quickly does he pick things up. And, and he did from the jump. Now, one thing is he was coached really well in high school. You know, Scott Altenberg was actually a UCLA guy. Um, is a tremendous high school football coach. And so when Devin came in here, I think the transition, um, especially for all those kids that come in from the Trinity League, um, it, it, it's, it's maybe a little easier. Uh, Blaylock was like that when he came in from Bosco, you know. Um, but um, he's picked things up really quickly. He competes. Um, sometimes a freshman stands out for the wrong reasons. Um, I and mean, you never noticed. You know, him, like, uh, there's a blown coverage. There's a guy running deep down the field, and he's in the flat saying, and I didn't know what I had. I think he's he's really smart. He's really competitive. Um, and he's got a, a, a skill set. He's, he's got length. Um, he really is a guy that has a tremendous work ethic. Like, he wants to be a great football player and works at it. Um, he doesn't just talk about it. So um, we're excited about, you know, as, as he continues to grow. And everything around here is earned. You know, so as if he continues to work, um, the way he's worked through the spring and then in, the, in yesterday's training session yesterday, then we expect to see him on the field. Quinton, you said yesterday, obviously, this team is finally experienced. It's taken a few years to get to this point, but how do you see that experience kind of showing up, even in, in training? I know it's only been one day, but how do you expect that it will show yeah, up? Yeah, I think part of it, any any really good team is, is player-led, not coach-fed, um, and I think our, this team is, is really player-led. You know, we've got leaders on both sides of the ball, you know, whether it's Q Lake and Q Knight and Bo and Odawa and Otito and that group on the defensive side of the ball. And then, you know, Dorian and Sam Morazzo, John Gaines, Greg Dulcich, Chase Coda, guys that have played a lot of football, significant snaps, um, and know what it looks like. You know, and it's, it's not about just talking about it. It's actually going out and working it. And so um, KB, our strength coach, talked about, you know, how hard they worked in, in – in that time off from when we finished spring, spring training um, to when we got back off the field yesterday. So um, they haven't missed a step from that standpoint. But you got to have great leadership for that. I think that's what we have right now. Just, uh, Ke- Keegan Jones was out yesterday. What's, what's his status injury-wise? Is he going to be back soon? And you will hear this more than once from me. And <laughs> Keegan is unavailable. Yeah, got it. So that's a school thing that for everybody's status. And just so if you're going to ask me about anything, I'm not going to be repetitive. But... Anybody ask about I'll give you the same answer that they're just not available. So right now Keegan is unavailable. What did you expect?